it's the uh, Pets S1 solo display. Actually, Pam, let me introduce you to uh, Pam College, who's going to take us through this um, the narration of the aerobatics and the uh, Pets S1. So, Pam, without putting too fine a point on it, you know everything there is to do to know about the Pets S1 because that was your um, the plane that you flew that in. Uh, back in the 1970s. Are we on? Hang on, just a technical challenge here. We'll try that one, Pam. How's that? Now we're right. There she um, is. Yes, I'll, I'll be telling you a little bit about this this aircraft, which is the same aircraft that I flew in the World Aerobatic Champs in 1976. So. Um, Without smoke trails, I'll just add. Yes, yeah, yes, no. Back, back in the day, I, di I didn't have a smoke system, so today you'll see a more, it's easier to see an aerobatic display when there's smoke, so it does make it more interesting. So you're going to see Andrew Love perform an aerobatic display in, in a pit special. If you were here in 2019, you would have seen Andy fly my display sequence from the late 1970s in Morris Tull's pit special. But today, Andy will be flying his own display sequence, but it's in my old pits. When I say old, it is nearly 50 years old. But like Granddad's X, uh, it has been rebuilt, new, air, new fabric, new engine, it's like a new aircraft. So to give you a brief history of the aeroplane, I, I, when Andy starts, I won't actually be saying much about the individual manoeuvres because I want to tell you about the, the aircraft and about Andy. Um, but he does start, the sequence does start um, with a top roll, which is the same as I had in mind. If the first and last manoeuvres are similar to my sequence, but in between, it's a whole lot more energetic. Just give a wave to these guys going by. energetic aer aerobatic display with quite a lot of snapping manoeuvres and tumbling manoeuvres. I want you to watch out for a Lomshevac. You saw that performed by Yak-52 um, earlier on. Um, monop monop <laughs> monoplane pilots tend to say that a pits won't do a Lomshevac, it does a pits fit. So here's the torque roll. And you're right up there, coming, coming, having come in from behind. So this aircraft is a Pitts S1S, 180 horsepower, 180 horsepower Lycoming. It's a single seat biplane. This one was built late 1974. It came out of the factory early 75. Um, I had it from new. It was registered in 76 NZ, and I flew it through the United States in 1975. Um, there's a long story there. The, the 1976 aerobatic champs were going to be held in the United States, but they got moved to Russia. So in 1976 it was shipped to New Zealand, and then to the 1976 World Aerobatic Champs in Kiev, which was then Russia. After returning to New Zealand, it was registered as ZKPAC, and I did a number of display flights around New Zealand in the late 1970s, so some of you old enough may have seen it. Its last flight in New Zealand was in October 1981, so I'd owned it for six and a half years and flew over 500 hours, mostly aerobatics. At that stage, Andy wasn't even born. So here he comes back across. So details of my aerobatic story are in the book Silver Wings, which I'll mention later. The aircraft was then sold to Australia, where it flew with the Melbourne Aerobatic Club and private owners until 1999, when it was grounded due to an engine issue. So in 1999, Andy was 16 years old and did his first solo. So the aircraft didn't fly again for 20 years. Like most rebuilds, it took a long time. It started in Australia and the rebuild was later completed here in New Zealand. In Australia, it was registered VHPUG. Back in New Zealand, PAC wasn't available anymore, so it became ZKPUG. 
which I quite like. Uh, my family, our family dog when I was a child was a pug. So I've always thought it's quite appropriate for a pug-nosed aeroplane. So its next flight in New Zealand was in August 2019. So that was 38 years after it had left our shores. And Andy's owned this aircraft since November 2019. So about Andy, um, so from a young age, he was interested in flying, particularly aerobatics, and even more particularly, pit specials. He made his first solo flight the day after his 16th birthday in November 1999. As I said, that's when this plane was then out of the air. And I've followed Andy's aerobatic journey since his first flying New Zealand competition in 2005. I'd help by critiquing his manoeuvres from the ground, um, and, as a judge would. And he's been flying various pit special aircraft since 2007. His passion for aerobatics and pit specials led him to instigating the annual South Island Acrovest competition. The first one was held here at Amaka in 2015 to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the pit special. When the opportunity arose, for him to buy a pug. I was also excited by this, as Andy appreciates the history of this aeroplane, and I enjoy seeing it flying again in New Zealand, and flown with such skill. He became the advanced category champion at the recent New Zealand Aerobatic Champs, and it's his first year competing in that category. So Andy is now an experienced and sought after aerobatic instructor, and he's currently vice president of the New Zealand Aerobatic Club, and has put in many voluntary hours aerobatic competitions. He's also involved with flying the World War I aeroplanes at Masterton with the Vintage Aviator Limited and if you've seen him flying a World War I aircraft here today. Andy manages to keep balance in his life. I, I admire him for this. He puts in the hard yards with his business and then he can indulge in his passion for aerobatics and vintage aircraft and sharing his skills and expertise with others. He schedules quality time with his family, and all that takes good organisation and a supportive wife and family. So I think you'll agree that he puts on a pretty good display in this aircraft. It's a lot more energetic and doing a lot more things than I did. So there he's giving you a nice presenting the aircraft to you. and a nice pass. So this aircraft has quite a lot of history. It's interesting, seeing as we've had a lot of warbirds here, that, that this is also just right at the end of the war that the Pitts Special was designed. I always understood, some have said it's 1944. I've always remembered 1945 because then it's the same age as me. So it's a design that's endured and, and, and was competitive for many years. At world level now, you seem to need monoplanes with very big engines. Um, but the pits still does a lovely display, and for anyone who flies it, they will say that they get that pits grin. So Andy's probably coming around now for a landing shortly. Um, I mentioned earlier the book Silver Wings. Um, this is the history of New Zealand women in aviation in New Zealand, and it's been published by the New Zealand Association of Women in Aviation. I have some copies here um, with me today, and I'll be positioned after the show over towards the World War I aircraft where the pits was parked earlier today, and where the classic cars are. You'll pass us on the way out. It's just $20. It needs to be cash, sorry, we haven't got FPOS. Uh, you'll get a signed copy. Um, so my aerobatic flying ended quite some years ago, um, but I have still been actively flying, but I think the time is coming to where I don't need to own an aeroplane anymore or do quite as much flying as I had in the past. Um, so for those pilots out there, I have a very nice Piper Cherokee 180, uh, which I've owned for nearly 22 years, uh, a lovely aeroplane, a good one for 
private owner, it's time it had a new home, private owners or a syndicate to get some friends together. If you're interested, come and see me. I think I, I noted earlier in the day that we, we had that the Hercules had been with the Air Force since 1965. Um, so my Cherokee's 1965, and I think it's it's an oldie but a goodie. Pam, oh, back yeah. in the day, you wouldn't be able to do that, would you? Twelve for you. <laughs> you probably got to get rid of that smoke too. Empty it out. Empty the tank. Thank you very, very much for your uh, for your lovely commentary and uh, for the history of um, women in aviation. In a way, you're just one of those uh, the memories that we will have. But put your hand up for for Andy, Andy Love, who was a tremendous display in the Pertes one. Has anyone seen the Pitts one? I was just going to say, <laughs> just it's there somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> I can't quite see it. As Aaron said, it's a bit like my Jeep yesterday. Just like that. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Why not? Why not? And he's gone. <laughs> we have some 1930s classic.